We're talking Blue Raider football. Live from the Boulevard Bar and Grill, it's Rick Stockstill Live. One hour of football conversation with the head coach of the Blue Raiders. Be a part of the show on Twitter using the hashtag AskStock. Tonight's show is presented by Ascend Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Bud Light, it's for the fans. And Ascension St. Thomas, official hospital partner of MTSU. Now with head coach Rick Stockstill, here's the voice of the Blue Raiders, Chip Walters. Welcome into the Boulevard tonight on this Monday as we work our way through the 2022 football season. Chip Walters along with head coach Rick Stockstill and we are live just across from campus at the Boulevard Bar and Grill, our favorite sports bar and grill in Murfreesboro. Be sure and stop by today. Be sure and stop by tonight. Heck, come on by and, and, and join us here this evening. Coach, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, Chip. How are you doing? Doing good. That's doing awesome. Good. It's been a Busy, busy day, but that's a good day, and uh, it's already been a good day for the Blue Raiders with a basketball victory. The Lady Raiders are playing right now down in Macon, Georgia, against Mercer, so uh, wish them all the best, and uh, we will uh, – but now the overlap is uh, officially underway with football and basketball going on on, on both sides. But tonight uh, wrapping up uh, the, uh, the Blue Raider matchup at Louisiana Tech – uh, Tech got the win by a score of 40 to 24. And, you know, going in, we talked last week about that matchup and about Tech, how their season had been going. And they had been a bit of a, you know, they kind of reminded me of, of middle of the week before uh, having gone through some adversity and uh, lost two overtime games. And uh, they were primed to have, have a good game. Uh, and uh, but it, it was a it was a, quite a contest for for a good portion of that game. But uh, they they were dangerous. They did a lot of good things. Got their quarterback back, and uh, it was a there was a obviously a tough stretch in there for Middle. But uh, what were your thoughts about the matchup going into it, and what were your biggest concerns? Well, I, I said it all last week that you know they were a better team than what their record indicated. Uh, they had some couple tough. You know, losses there to Clemson and uh, Missouri. And then uh, those two overtime losses. They played the last couple games without their starting quarterback. And they got him back. They had good players. And, you know, give them credit. They did a nice job. And, and uh, you know, we didn't play uh, as well as we needed to, as well as we had liked. Uh, and it's a perfect example of what I talk about every week, that when you – lose a turnover battle and especially the explosive plays it's hard to win and they uh they dominated us in both those categories and uh you know we played a lot better the second half defensively uh we just gave up too many explosive plays the first half and then the second half offensively we just you know turned it over every time we blinked and uh you know, you're not going to beat a good team doing that. So we got to get those things, <clears throat> excuse me, we got to get those things corrected this week. And, uh, but uh, to me, that was the, the bottom line in that game last Saturday was, you know, the explosive plays and the, and the turnovers that we cre had. Yeah. And uh, in, in first half, uh, it was, it was kind of uh, interesting. First quarter, uh, you know, the, actually the first couple of drives, uh, you had there were some they they took some shots and your secondary made some great plays early on. Yeah, you know, and there's a bunch of 50-50 balls and uh, you know early you know we we guys did a good job and then after a few of them that you know their guy did a good job. So uh, when you play on the back end. Uh, you know, you got to have a short memory because you're not going to defend every one. You're going to, you're going to get beat. You know, sometimes. Yeah. And uh, you know, we just uh, at times we did good, other times we didn't. You know, and you you go back to UTEP. You know, we did a good job of keeping the ball in front of us. And when you do that, it's hard to score points. And uh, this past week, we didn't do a good job or a good enough job, a, a good enough consistently do a good job of keeping the ball in front of us and you know they scored points 
Yeah, obviously, uh, as far as their personnel are concerned, uh, there, are two, there are two receivers, both named Harris, Trey and Smoke, uh, going into it, had good numbers uh, throughout the year. Trey Harris, uh, you know, he kind of reminded me of, you know, one or two of those, those guys from UTSA just had really high skill level. Yeah, he's a really good player. He missed most of the the previous game. He had hurt his foot uh, the last week and a half, and they got him back. Uh, he, but he's really good. You knew that going in that if he was able to play, that he was going to be a, you know, a really really special player. He made some made two really really special uh, difficult catches over on our sideline there. Uh, I think in the third quarter, and. Uh, you know, just he 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 pressures the defense because of his speed and and length. And uh, early, you know, we did did some good things, and then you know he got his, uh, you know, also. But you know, both those two guys are really good. Smoke is really dangerous in the kicking game, and I thought we did a good job with him. But uh, Trey, you know, he was he was special. Made some really really nice plays with a guy like <laughs> with a guy like Smoke Harris, who is as good as he is in punt returns, kick returns, whatever it may be. How do you try to handle those? I mean, you hear folks in the well, you need to kick away from him, or or how do you how do you how do you handle that? And uh, are there some guys that you do try to kick away from? Yeah, I mean, obviously you try to kick away from some guys, but. You know, he didn't scare us like that. I mean, he's a good player, but it wasn't like we were scared that we got to kick away from him, <clears throat> and we didn't. You know, to me, the thing when you face a good returner, whether he's a, a punt returner or a kick returner, and he is both, uh, that your gunners you have to win in the punting game. They got to get down there and force him to either make a fair catch or make him go sideways until the rest of your teammates can get there. And we did a really nice job of that. And then kickoff return, uh, we did a nice job. You know, you got to stay in your lanes and you got to get, you know, a lot of hats to the ball. And uh, we did that also. So I thought we did a nice job, you know, in the kicking game and defending him. Another player, uh, we, we talked about McNeil a little bit, but he is a guy who uh, – Came in there, transferred from Texas Tech. He had been with Coach Cumbie, uh, I guess, down there, and and he had been injured. And what makes him as dangerous as he is? Uh, you know, he, he's a really good passer. He's not gonna he's not gonna beat you with his feet. He's accurate. He's got a good release. Uh, even though he did, you know, take his own read out of there late in the game, and you know, got a first down, but. Uh, he's not a guy that you have to really be cognizant of in the running game, but he's got good height. He's a tall guy. He's got good pocket presence uh, and made good throws. He threw, he throws the deep ball really well. He's accurate. And, uh, you know, he's played a bunch of snaps. And, uh, you know, at, at Texas Tech and, and then transferring here or there. So uh, he's just a, he's a really good player. Yep. <laughs> As the game got underway, you had an exchange of punts. Louisiana Tech then had a long drive and missed on a field goal, and you turn around, and uh, on the third play of the next drive, you get a, a terrific run from, from Terry Wilkins, but he got good blocking up front, and you guys were shorthanded in the kicking game, or in the run game, rather, and, uh, I mean, you, 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 Terry was used, and uh, also uh, DJ Riles was used in there as well. So, uh, but terrific run there, and he got. Uh, we've seen him cut loose a couple of times this year. Yeah, you know, it was a nice run by Terry, and and you're right. You know, we lost two backs, uh, Joe and Darius, at the uh, UTEP game, so we were down. So we had to move DJ Riles from you know obviously quarterback to running back back there. Still trying to redshirt him. He's played in two games now and uh i hope for his sake you know we're able to do it but you know we've got four games left so i don't know if if we're going to have that luxury but uh, you know terry came in made a nice run he gets overwhelmed a little not a little bit he gets overwhelmed in pass protection because of his his size or their lack of uh, you know and then dj you know did some nice things and you know, had a couple nice runs, especially in space, 
when we got him outside there, you know, with some screen balls. And, you know, he had a, he had a nice run, you know, uh, going in, in the red zone down there. Uh, so hopefully we can get some guys back and, and be able to redshirt DJ if we can. Uh, but it was just where we're at. Frank, you know, had some nice runs, he, but he's hobbled. And uh, so that was the reasoning by, for moving DJ and giving Terry, you know, a couple snaps in there. Yep. The Murfreesboro Post is Rutherford County's local newspaper. Subscriptions to the Post are just $20 a year for 52 issues. Visit online at MurfreesboroPost.com. More with Coach Rick Stockstill after this. You're listening to the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hey, Blue Raider fans. This is Coach Rick Stockstill. Have you heard about the MTSU debit card from Ascend Federal Credit Union? This card is exactly what you need for your busy lifestyle. Use it online and in stores. Purchases are automatically deducted from your Ascend checking account, and you can even add the card to your mobile wallet for ultimate convenience. Bank where the Blue Raiders belong. Ascend Federal Credit Union exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Ascend is federally insured by NCUA. Visit us at ascend.org. Put Lee Company on your team and you'll always be ahead of the game with home maintenance, improvements, and repair. Sign up for a Lee Company home maintenance plan to have your heating and air conditioning system tuned up twice a year. In addition, you'll receive a comprehensive electrical and plumbing home inspection, plus member-only discounts and priority service, all for as low as $8.25 a month. For the very best electrical, heating, air conditioning, and plumbing services, call Lee Company at 615-867-1000 or visit LeeCompany.com. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance takes great pride in treating Middle Tennessee State University athletes, experts in bones, joints, and muscles, and with more than 60 specialists in locations across Middle Tennessee, TOA has a playbook to get you back in the game. To request an appointment, visit us at toa.com or give us a call at 855-NEED-TOA. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, or TOA, the official team doctors for Blue Raider Athletics. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Hey, Blue Raider fans. This is Dr. Mark Hardison with Middle Tennessee Oral and Implant Surgery. We are so proud to be able to serve the Blue Raider teams and their families when they need wisdom teeth removed, dental implants, or other specialty oral care. Our mission is to provide health care as it should be, providing compassion, availability, and excellence to every one of our patients. We deeply appreciate the support of your business as we join in supporting our team. Let's go Blue! Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school, or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader, and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. Welcome back in to Rick Stocks to Live tonight as we come to you from the Boulevard. Blue Raider fans, get ahead of the game with the best home services team in town for your heating, air conditioning, plumbing, electrical, and home improvement needs. Lee Company, the team to call 615-867-1000 or online at leecompany.com. And, Coach, after you jumped out to the 7-0 lead on Terry Wilkins' run, one of those explosive plays you talked about, a 41-yarder from, uh, from McNeil, to Allen, uh, tied the game at seven. Uh, then you, you got into a situation tied at 14. Uh, Cunningham had a two-yard run to cap off an eight-yard, uh, an 80-yard 80, an 80 drive. Then on two separate occasions right there, you held them to, to field goals, which, which I thought really made a difference heading toward halftime. Yeah, Chip, you know, again, I, I beat a dead horse, but it's 
if you don't give up big plays, it's hard to it's it's hard to score. And I thought our defense, you know, did a nice job, especially in the second half when, you know, we had all those turnovers. But you know, we have a fumble on a kickoff return there, and we hold them. They get the ball, whatever it is, around the 30 or so, and we hold them to a field goal there. And you know, we we just did a we we did a nice job at times defensively. We just had that. You know, a couple, three drives there where we, you know, gave up some explosions, and uh, you know, other than that, you know, we did a we did a pretty nice job defensively. Yeah, and, and as the game went on, they hit a big play again, uh, and went up twenty-seven fourteen, and now you're getting down to a minute to go in the half, and and uh, really a nice, nice drive to end the half, uh, and and uh, Chase and and. Uh, Jalen Lane connect up on a, on a four-yard pass. But, man, I, I thought that was, you know, you get there and, you know, at 27-14, it's feeling one way. And then you, you get to the half and it's 27-21 and think, man, we get the ball back to start the second half. At that point, you know, I felt pretty good about things. Yeah, you know, I thought that, that last drive there when we got the ball with just a minute and, you know, a few seconds, uh, Chase and the offense, uh, offensive coaches did a really nice job of, of uh, getting down there and getting, you know, a, a touchdown there. And, you know, like I told the guys at halftime, you know, it, you had that feel, you're down 28, 21, 27, 21, you know, so you're down a, a score and you had that feel that, you, like, you should be down by 100. You yeah. know, it just – but we're, we were right in it. You know, we, we stayed in it. and uh, You know, we get, you know, we're excited to get the ball, you know, and uh, felt like, you know, we were in a good position to kind of settle in and, you know, play a good second half. And uh, it, would just, it didn't turn out that way, you know, with, yeah. you know, with all the turnovers that we had the next, you know, four or five possessions. So, um, but, you, but, again, you look at it, you go through it, and I, I – with a, even on top of all the turnovers there, you know, we, we throw the pick six. We gave up, you know, a field goal after the fumble on the kickoff return. We gave up the pick six. You know, that's the only points they scored, you know, off, you know, all those turnovers. So it, as bad as it was, we were still in it, you know, exactly. late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter. It was still a, a two-touchdown game or a two-score game most of the time, and we just – we just never got anything going consistently from a rhythm standpoint, from a consistency standpoint, you know, offensively. Yeah, I was just looking at my play sheet here, and, and you're, you're exactly right with what you're saying. And, you know, if you're in this long enough, you're going to have a lot of good things happen to you in a quarter somewhere, and you're going to have a, a ton of bad things to happen to you in a quarter. Well, that was our day, yeah, obviously, yeah. and it, with four turnovers and a block punt in one quarter. Have you ever gone through one quite like that? You know, I hope not, but, you know, you go back to <laughs> – Some of you want to block out. You, know, you go back to, you know, Western Kentucky last year oh, in yeah. Nick's first start. You know, we, we had a tough go of it there. Uh, you know, but, you know, like you said, it. I'm proud of – you know, we, we kept battling. You know, our, our guys are – you know, they don't look at the scoreboard. They play hard every snap on both sides and – we just weren't good enough yesterday or that or Saturday that day, and uh, to overcome, you know, the mistakes and you know then we, you know, we we, we lost some guys. We just we kind of ran out of, you know, ran out of guys also with the, yeah. the injuries that we were having. And you know, and like you said, at thirty four twenty one, you're thinking, gosh, you know, if we can, you know, get you know, put one in, get a turnover, play, you know, and get seven more, you're in the lead yeah. and. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and the other amazing part uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, a drive that started with a minute 12 to go in the third and ended uh, with 9.25 to go in the fourth. So about six or seven minutes, that was a 21-play drive that ended up in a field goal. Yeah, that, you know, that's, um, you know, it's, like I said, that's hard to do. I mean, and. And it kind of, it's kind of, was kind of indicative of, you know, 
we're not creating anything explosive. Uh, you know, we, a lot of plays, you know, we, we score a touchdown and it's called back because we had the holding penalty and we end up, you know, kicking the field goal. And so, you, you know, you, you look at it, that's 24, but if you'd have had those extra four, now it's 28. And yeah. it, it's just uh, – it was just a frustrating, you know, day overall. And, uh, you know, but our, our guy our, just uh, – we just didn't create anything explosive in the in the second half, and you know we turned it over a bunch. Yeah, way too many times. the final ended up being forty to twenty four. Louisiana Tech got the win, broke a two game losing streak for them, and uh, the Blue Raiders now still in a position to try to get themselves bowl eligible uh, with two straight home games coming up, and then a road trip to FIU. We'll take a timeout more with uh, Coach Rick Stockstill after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Every week, our Blue Raiders go the extra mile to make sure they're at their very peak. At Sunbelt Bakery, they do the same thing to make sure their granola bars are at their peak. Every week, Sunbelt Bakery brings new batches of granola bars from their bakery to your neighborhood. That's why Sunbelt Bakery's granola bars taste like they just baked them. Because they did. Try a Sunbelt Bakery granola bar today and taste the difference. Sunbelt Bakery. Bakery fresh taste. No preservatives. It's never lost on Window World that your home is your largest physical investment. Window World's integrity will be noticed from your very first moment of contact. A clean, professional installation of premium windows, siding, doors, and more are designed to last while leaving your home looking amazing. Window World and their lifetime warranty will always be there when it really matters. They're America's most trusted remodeler and proud partner of Middle Tennessee Athletics because the difference is integrity and always in the details. MT Dining is eating made easy. With more than 19 dining locations, you'll never run out of variety on campus. Whether it's Chick-fil-A, Steak and Shake, or Starbucks, we've got the brands you love right here. Need a quick snack or Scantron? Stop by one of the six pods on campus. And try out MT Dining's new farm-to-fork experience. Farmer's Market, now open. Located in the Student Union. Visit mtdining.com for more information. Or visit our office in the Keithley University Center. Room 202. Whether you go online or go in person, City Auto in Murfreesboro is where you go to see a gazillion cars and choose the one that's right for you. And there's no better time to go than now because we have a bigger, brand new facility. It's the easy, comfortable, convenient way to find what you're looking for. Remember, cityauto.com is where you go to find your car online. And the all-new City Auto campus in Murfreesboro is where you go to see it in person. Go now, and we'll see you there. You buy something because you found it at a low price, and soon you realize it's no bargain because you really needed something better. It happens all the time, especially with car insurance. But the good news is you can get the right coverage at the right price. Just talk to me, State Farm Agent Bud Morris. I'll help you get the right coverage at a price that's right for you. Call me at 893-1417 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Bud Morris, providing insurance and financial services. Middle Tennessee Electric proudly supports the Blue Raiders, and we're proud to power the scoreboard lights at Floyd Stadium. When it comes to the electric service in the community, you can always trust MTE to do what's best for our members. We serve by providing affordable, reliable, safe electricity and outstanding member services. Here at MTE, we serve to make life better for our members and their communities. Visit MTE.com to learn more. And about that scoreboard? Well, light it up, Blue Raiders. Welcome back to Rick Stocks to Live tonight as we come to you from the Boulevard and uh, wanted to dive into the stats of the game just a little bit and uh, talk with Coach about that. But um, uh, Jordan Ferguson had a heck of a game, Coach. He had, I think, seven total tackles, four tackles for loss, two sacks, uh, and you could tell he was playing with it with an edge on Saturday. I thought, I thought he was uh – really good i thought he you know was a dominating force on the defensive side of the ball the whole game and you know, it's kind of what i said earlier that don't look at the scoreboard just play the game play as hard as you can then when it's over look up and see what happens 
and that's what he did. That's what he does every game, and it doesn't matter uh, the score, uh, up 100 or down 100. Uh, he, he plays extremely hard. He plays it the way, as a coach, you would want your players to play. And uh, he was relentless, uh, just, just a really, really good football player, and I'm so happy for him uh, that he's able to – he's having the year, his last year of college football, uh, as good as it's been uh, because, you know, he, he deserves to, to go out you know, uh, with a good year, you know, with everything he's done. Yeah, now he's up to 18 and a half career sacks after the two on Saturday. Uh, your running back situation, we touched on it just a little bit, but you were without Bracey, you were without Irvin. You'd, we'd lost Sparrow for the year earlier. So Terry Wilkins got his chance, and you put DJ back there. And, and you know, how, how much practice time does DJ get in that position because it's not – is it what he's normally practicing, or no? I mean, now that I mean, he didn't he didn't take any snaps at quarterback, you know, last week, and uh, you know he's been because, like you said, we lost we lost our various earlier in the year the Tennessee State game, and then we lost those two against UTEP, and uh, you know, so he needed to get all he could get, and he got you know he got every rep. He, he didn't like he didn't do anything at quarterback last week. And uh, he'll do the same thing this week. He'll stay at running back and uh, try to get as much as he can. Yeah, and with that in mind, you know, you lose Chase Cunningham uh, to what appeared to be uh, – appeared to be he got hit pretty hard and, and had to go out. Uh, what can you update us on with his situation and, and uh, what does that do for you from a depth position uh, at, at quarterback? Well, you know, hopefully, hopefully Chase will get back, and uh, but you know, again, you're trying to redshirt Nick to make up for, you know, his sacrifice that he made last year when Chase got went down with the knee surgery or knee. Uh, you're trying to make up for that, and that was our plan, you know, this year, and uh, you know, so he played his first game, and we, like I said, we got four left, so hopefully Chase can get back, and you know, we can. Uh, you know, is your is your hope to to try to get Chase back to where you have one game where Nick doesn't have to play oh, I, at I, all? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's you know same with you know DJ. Hopefully, you know he's got two games left. You know that he can play and still redshirt. Hopefully, he doesn't have to play in three. You know Kyle Lowe. You know now he's got. You know our plans to redshirt him. You know he can play in all four games. Uh, you know in some capacity there also. So you just try to be, you know, cognizant of, you know, you, you're going to do whatever you have to do to try to win the game. That's always going to take precedent, you know, but in the same respect, you want to be, you know, mindful and, and cognizant and, and, and try to do what's best for the pl individual player also. And, you know, Ky uh, Nick was a true freshman last year, you know, that, he sacrificed uh, and played those last five games, you know, for the team. And you try to now that, you know, Chase came back, you try to uh, give Nick his year back that he lost last year because, you know, being the type of kid he is. So hopefully we can do that, you know, where Nick doesn't have to look back and say, I'm a junior and I played five games as a yeah. freshman and I played – five games as a sophomore, you know, and I'm now I got two years left and I really – and it feels like you really haven't played. So, uh, hopefully we can, you know, do what's right for him. Yeah, and and, and, and obviously if, if you're able to do that, that means that Chase is going to be back and that would be a good thing as well because, you know, we saw him take that, that, that walk to the locker room and – and we've seen guys do that before and, and, uh, and just really hope that he's able to bounce back quickly from that. He will. Chase is a competitor. He's a yep. fighter. And we'll be, Chase will be all right. Speaking of quarterbacks, you mentioned uh, uh, Kyle Lowe. Uh, we talked about DJ. Uh, and as the year goes along, obviously guys come along. Uh, what about Stone Frost and Preston Rice? Uh, any thought of using them at all at this point? Uh, you know, Preston's played a couple times. 
maybe maybe just once, you know, there. I think maybe the Tennessee State game or maybe early. Uh, I'm trying to think maybe Chase had to come out for something, whether it was his helmet came off or something with that knee brace. It seems like he went in early. Uh, you know, both those guys can get you out of a game. Uh, you know, but if we, if we have to win the game, we need it to win the game, you know, uh, that's when we got to make some, you know, decisions on who gives us the best opportunity to win the game, whether it's Nick or DJ or Kyle or, you know, Stone or, or Preston. All right. We want to remind you that tonight's show is brought to you in part by Bud Light. Bud Light proudly welcomes fans back to Floyd Stadium this year. And for the next two weeks, we'll be at Floyd Stadium. Bud Light is for the fans. We'll take a timeout. We'll talk to Matt Swearad, the voice of the Charlotte 49ers, after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. How about a bid for a win and a play for quick bucks? How about a win, about a win, with a win and a bid for $1, $2, $5, $10 quick games, the best cash games around. How about a win, about a win, with a win and sold at your nearest Tennessee Lottery retailer. Try the new instant games from the Tennessee Lottery. They're loaded with top prizes from $50 up to $5,000. Get them before they're going, going, gone. Only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Please play responsibly. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. Touchdown! You owe me five bucks. We mean every sound. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Introducing new Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda Variety Pack. You hear that? It's seltzer with the pop of soda, all with zero sugar. Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, the loudest flavors ever. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, IRC Beers, St. Louis, Missouri. The MTSU Alumni Association is proud of its more than 130,000 living alumni who are leading, teaching, entertaining, researching, buying, farming, nursing, and more worldwide. Every Blue Raider accomplishment adds value to your degree. Are you connected to the MTSU National Alumni Association? Visit mtalumni.com to share what you're doing, update your information, and see how you can be involved and informed. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Murfreesboro Medical Clinic is proud to be the official medical group of MTSU Athletics. We all win big when we work as a team for better health. Just like MTSU's athletes and coaches, our healthcare professionals work tirelessly to make our community proud. At MMC, we really are true blue. MTSU is our hometown team, and your health is our mission. Visit mmclinic.com or call us at 615-893-4480. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company. For 82 years, Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name in heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 1-888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders. Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. The way we do work has changed. Where we work, how we work, and the day-to-day -day challenges we face as businesses have evolved. As organizations continue to adapt, RJ Young is here to help. We're your one stop for technology solutions that power your business. Whether it's office technology and equipment, managed IT services, business process outsourcing, or digital communications, we can help make your workflows easier, faster, and more efficient so your team can focus on the core of your business. To learn more about what RJ Young can do for you, visit themodernoffice.com. Welcome back to Rick Stockstill Live tonight as Middle Tennessee coming off two straight road games, getting ready for two straight home games for the only time this year. And the Charlotte 49ers will be coming in here this weekend. And Matt Swearad, the longtime voice of the 49ers, uh, joins us. And, and Matt, first of all, uh, it just really never stops for you, does it? Uh, because you do the, the Charlotte Knights minor league team. Uh, you get in our area uh, during the summer, during minor league baseball season, and uh, now here you come back during football. Yeah, it's been really busy. I guess it's been now two seasons uh, since Major League Baseball took over uh, AAA in the minor league. So we play 150 games. At, we played right up to October. So my first full week off from baseball, uh, it was the football bye week. It was 
halfway through our season and ended up having a basketball coaches show. And I told our guys at, at the restaurant we'd do our show at, I said, I just finished baseball two days ago, and now I'm talking basketball. This is crazy. But, yeah, now the, the overlap stops uh, starts for me uh, today as well with basketball and, and football. So the, the crazy times continue. Yep, we did. Uh, we had, of course, men's basketball earlier this morning. And, and as this show is airing, we also have women's basketball on the air. So it's, uh, it's all happening. I counted up the other day. I think we have 22 events on the air during the month of November. So it's one of our, our busier months. One quick baseball question before uh, uh, we jump into, into this football game. You mentioned uh, Major League Baseball took over Minor League Baseball. How, did you, how do you like the six-game series now? They're, they're good in terms of, um, you know, you, you get to just stay in one place. And, and that's good and bad, too, because you, you stay in one place and you get to see the same team over and over. Um, but after a few days, you also kind of get kind of tired of being in, in, in the same city. So I enjoyed the multiple city road trips, but I, I understand on a, a cost kind of situation where it's more effective to uh, not travel as much, not you know fly as much as we would be doing. Um, and, and it works out a little bit better for the teams that way. But for someone like me, a broadcaster that has my whole day off until game time, after a few days in the same city, you want to go eat someplace else or do something something else. Yep, I understand that, and our uh, common uh, friend Jeff Him uh, pretty much says the same thing. All right, Middle Tennessee and Charlotte, both uh, teams that looking for a win this week. Middle Tennessee still has bowl aspirations with uh, four wins right now, uh, looking to get to six or seven with three games to play. Charlotte, uh, I mean, two weeks ago, uh, scored 50 this past week, gave up 50. It has been an up-and-down year for sure for the 49ers. Yeah, I'm not sure what team's going to show up this week in, in Tennessee. Um, played really well against Rice. That was the week that the team had fired head coach Will Healy. The team really responded, uh, had the most points they ever scored in their FBS history. Um, Chris Reynolds was fantastic. Uh, a couple of running backs are very good. And then we come out this week, we knew it would be a much – more difficult you know test with western kentucky with what they do rice is a very good team but western is so explosive um rice won't run away from you so you knew if you fell behind early you had time to come back and against western we fell behind early made some mistakes early and they buried us um and that was the fear our, our secondary has been really banged up we didn't have wayne jones who is our leading tackler. He might be back for the Middle Tennessee game. Um, fingers crossed on our side that he comes back. Um, but we've really been banged up all year. And it was so evident against a really good Western offense. They were clicking. Uh, Austin Reed was terrific. Threw six touchdown passes. They threw seven touchdown passes to seven different receivers. I mean, that's just amazing. So from the get-go, we were behind and, and never could catch up. And it was a tough one. But... We'll see what team shows up this weekend. Well, let's talk a little bit about Chris Reynolds because he has been the man who has stirred the drink there for, what, eight or ten years now, it seems, uh, as the as the 49ers starting quarterback. And, man, he is one of the most competitive cats in this entire league. Really is. I mean, his story is amazing. He was a, a true walk-on uh, out of Moxville, North Carolina. Um, you know, he, he – just battle his way from the scout team to, you know, to getting a scholarship. And, you know, once Brad Lambert was let go, our original coach and Will Healy came in and Healy sees this, you know, 5'9", 5'10", little quarterback, like, I can't win with this guy. So he was over-recruited like three or four times with power five guys, four-star guys, and he's beaten every single one of those guys out. And um, he is the heart and soul of our football team. Now, he's been banged up. He really has had a, a, a long year. Very first game of the year at FAU. Messed up his left shoulder, which is not his throwing shoulder. Um, but it's been bothering him. He doesn't like to get hit. Um, a big part of his success back in 2019 when we went to the bowl game uh, was his ability to run. And he doesn't really do that much anymore. He tries to avoid running because he's trying to stay on the field, uh, which, you know, when we get behind and teams know that he's going to throw it, well, they bring a lot of pressure, and it's been difficult. That's what happened against Western Kentucky last week. He was just being chased all over the field. 
but he is such a gamer. You're right. He's so um, he, he, he works harder than anybody I've ever seen in my life. No matter what he does after football, he's going to be successful. He's that kind of guy. If you have a daughter, that's the guy you want your daughter to meet and marry. He's just a fantastic young man. And uh, he's been a lot of fun to watch. And you're right; he feels like he's it feels like he's been there ten years. <laughs> well, and, and, and we get the same. We have uh, we have a basketball player uh, who's actually playing his seventh year of college basketball this year. So, uh, you know, every school seems like has one of those guys in some sport somewhere. Now, uh, how many games did he miss this year? Uh, he missed, I want to say, two. Uh, he got hurt in FAU, came back in the second half, but really couldn't keep going. So we were behind. They took him out. He missed the uh, the next two and then came back at Georgia State. And that was our first win. And I call him the Moxville magician because he always seems to pull something out of a hat late in the game. And in that game, we're, we're down with 90 seconds to go. No timeouts left. And Reynolds just marched him down the field, threw a touchdown, and, and they beat Georgia State. Um, had a chance to do the same thing against UTEP and uh, couldn't get it done that time. But um, he missed two games, and he definitely was missed. When he came back, you could tell we're a much better team when he's there. You think that uh, the Georgia State game, look at how uh, the Sun Belt and Conference USA have both played out, do you think that was uh, is, was that the bigger win or, or, or how they rebounded from a very emotional week and ended up winning uh, winning down in Texas? Uh, definitely Texas because even against Georgia State, we didn't play particularly well. Our defense gave up a lot. Um, against Rice, what was really amazing was I think it's the first time in years we saw a 49er team play a complete 60 minutes in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, special teams. They were fantastic. They came together. You know, you know, it was a lot they went through with the, the firing of Will Healy. And um, the coaching staff did a great job bringing everybody together. And they talked about just uh, knowing your assignment, just assignment football, just play the next play. And, and they did that for 60 minutes. And it was fun to watch. Unfortunately, it was a 180 this last weekend. So it's going to be interesting to see what team shows up, how this week goes. We have two games left, you and then home against Louisiana Tech, and we're done. Uh, so we got some upperclassmen on this team, and Reynolds is one of them. I know Reynolds is going to show up, but will the other guys show up? And, uh, you know, what, what can we do in, in Tennessee this week? Yeah, now as, as you look forward past the end of this year, however it all winds up, uh, are there uh, what direction do you think that, that Charlotte's going to look uh, for a permanent head coach? I think it's going to be somebody that has one at our level. Um, you know, they can always get one of these 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 young coordinators, but I, I think it's going to come from a, either a power five like that or somebody who has won at least the group of five level has had some success. Um, you hear all these kind of names being thrown around. I'm not sure what our athletic director, Mike Hill, is really looking for. But I'll say this. Before Will Healy was hired, you may remember, we actually offered and it was accepted the job by um, uh, Mike Houston, who's now at East Carolina. Hmm. He was at James Madison. Well, he took our job. And then all of a sudden, the ECU job got open. And he did a 180. Uh -huh. Backed out and went there. Now, you know, great facilities at that point. They are further along in their program history than we are. Uh, and he got paid a lot more. So you really can't fault him for where he ended up. And he's got the Pirates playing pretty good football right now. But um, he was the first guy that Mike Hill went for. And then somehow Will Healy got into the mix once that kind of went south. So I'm kind of looking at that higher as to who maybe Mike might be targeting. And Unless you're getting a guy that's had a lot of success like Mike did at the FCS level, I really think he's probably going to try to find somebody that's had or is working now at the, um, the FBS Power 5 level or Group of Five having success. Well, it makes sense. Uh, that was the direction he went uh, before for sure. Well, it seems like Middle and Charlotte always have some sort of craziness in the games, and, and I would expect uh, there will be uh, some of that coming up on Saturday. Yeah, you guys uh, – Give us the welcome to FBS football moment. You stuck 73 on us. <laughs> oh, they, they haven't you forgotten know. that yet. <laughs> haven't forgotten. A lot of our, our guys are all gone. I'm the only guy left that remembers that. Right? <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Matt, well, thanks so much for your time, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you this weekend.
Sounds great, Chip. Thank you. All right, Matt Swear joins us, the voice of the Charlotte 49ers. We'll take a time out more with Coach after this as you listen to Rick Stocks to Live on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Employers are posting pay. It's red. With heated seats. Serious air conditioning. And that uh, little compartment thingy, you know, where you put your sunglasses? You found the perfect car. Now get the perfect loan with Ascend. We've got low rates, flexible terms, and you can apply online at Ascend.org or at any of our branch locations. I'm going to name her Betty. Auto loans from Ascend Federal Credit Union. Banking without the bank. Ascend is federally insured by NCUA. All loans are subject to credit approval. Put Lee Company on your team and you'll always be ahead of the game with home maintenance, improvements, and repair. Sign up for a Lee Company home maintenance plan to have your heating and air conditioning system tuned up twice a year. In addition, you'll receive a comprehensive electrical and plumbing home inspection, plus member-only discounts and priority service, all for as low as $8.25 a month. For the very best electrical, heating, air conditioning, and plumbing services, call Lee Company at 615-867-1000 or visit LeeCompany.com. Hey, Blue Raider fans, this is Dr. Mark Hardison with Middle Tennessee Oral and Implant Surgery. We are so proud to be able to serve the Blue Raider teams and their families when they need wisdom teeth removed, dental implants, or other specialty oral care. Our mission is to provide health care as it should be, providing compassion, availability, and excellence to every one of our patients. We deeply appreciate the support of your business as we join in supporting our team. Let's go Blue! It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Hey, Blue Raider fans, Chip Walters here. Lightning's Locker Room, powered by Textbook Brokers, is the place to get your Blue Raider gear. Open Monday through Friday from 8 to 6 and Saturdays from 10 to 4. Lightning's Locker Room is just across the street from Floyd Stadium at 1321 Greenland Drive. It has all the MT polos, hoodies, T-shirts, hats, and all the other game day gear you'll ever need. See the selection online at mtsugear.com or at Gate 2A on game days. Lightning's Locker Room, the official game day provider, powered by Textbook Brokers. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Welcome back into the Boulevard tonight for Rick Stocks to Live as we head toward the top of the hour. And uh, Coach Stock is with us. And a couple of reminders about this weekend. It is the 40th annual Salute to Veterans and Armed Services. And Middle Tennessee was the first to do this. And in my opinion, they do it the best. Uh, you will have all now six branches of service. We have a new branch of service, Coach. We have... Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, Space Force. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but, you know, how, you know, Army has their song, Navy has Anchors Away, the Space Force hymn, or whatever the name of it is, was written by a professor in, ma in uh, media and entertainment. He, his submission was selected over everybody else, and his song is the official song of Space Force. Amazing what you can learn. I know. Stick around me, Coach. Sprock. I thought you were going to say that. Sprock. Also Sarah Sarah or Whatever that That's is. Or 2001 or Star Wars or something like it's, that. It's Elvis coming on stage is what it is, I Coach. They, I hear you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, again, want to remind any veterans who may be listening tonight, you have the opportunity to get uh, uh, free tickets, as, as we certainly recognize uh, you and your family uh, just show up uh, at the uh, pregame 
picnic, which will be at the Hall of Fame building, and they will be there to uh, supply you with tickets for the game. And, uh, Coach, I-, I wish you could see the halftime when those guys come across the field. I mean, I'm just glad that Dick and Dwayne do the halftime because it brings a tear to my eye when – to that, that program that, that was put together so many years ago by Joe Nunley, Joe Smith, and, and Terry Jolly had a lot to update it a little bit, and now Craig Cornish and his guys, along with uh, Military Science and the Daniels Center. It's, it's really a moving, moving uh, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, it, I mean, it's awesome, and I say it all the time. And, you know, anytime we can do anything to honor a – uh, the men and women that have served this country, no matter what it is, you know, it's uh, it's our duty to do that. And, and, you know, the 15 minutes at a football game doesn't do them justice. They deserve a it's heck of a start. lot more than that. Yeah. But it's just a, a small way to say thank you. We appreciate you and what you've done because none of us, none of us would be able to do what we do if it wasn't for them and what they continue to do for us. So my hat's off to them, and uh, I just uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. Yep. Uh, one other thing uh, from a football standpoint uh, that will happen during the game, former Blue Raider Doug Althaus, who uh, played here in the 1980s, uh, went into government work, uh, law enforcement. He was uh, with the DEA, was killed in action uh, he, he, he will be recognized along with his family. Coach Ed Bunio brought was when Coach Bunio got all those guys from up in Pennsylvania, Doug was one of those guys. He'll be recognized. And uh, so, uh, again, he, it's one of those situations where we just don't forget those guys who've done so much for the for – the, not only were they part of really good football teams here, but it went on and, and tried to do, do great things in this country. Yeah, when, when people say you sacrifice, I mean, these men and women sacrifice. Their families sacrifice. And, again, it's uh, we owe a great deal of gratitude, a great deal of appreciation uh, just to tip our hat to them and, and thank them because uh, they're elite, they're different, they do something that not many people out there would be willing to do. And uh, I just respect them all so much. Well, and now the opponent for the game on Saturday will be the Charlotte 49ers who uh, have gone through uh, the first part of a coaching change as Coach Will Healy was let go. And a lot of times you'll see if there's a change, a team will come back and have a bump, and they did. Went down and scored 50-some-odd points on Rice, then came back and gave up. 50 this past weekend but when you look at Charlotte you have to start with Chris Reynolds yeah he's a good player and and you look at you know last year you know or the last couple years we've played him he's been the difference in the game you know he threw for over 400 yards last year and uh just uh he's a really really good player he's a very good competitor uh like that guy said he's you know the team rallies behind him and they they lost him the first couple three games of the season and uh, they struggled without him and uh, most good teams or most teams that lose a quarterback at any level uh, you're not as good when you don't have your guy in there and they weren't as good early in the year when they didn't have him so we know we're going to get their best shot especially for him he knows he's got two college games left you know uh, been playing ball all his life, and uh, you know you're going to get his best shot. What did you see out of them uh, in the Rice game that you had not seen of them in film from previously in the year? Uh, you know, it wasn't, wasn't drastically a whole lot different, but the, the big thing, they just hit so many big, big plays. I mean, they had guys, you know, a lot, a lot of big plays down the field, touchdown passes, you know, explosive plays, and uh, – like that guy said, you know, with Rice, you feel like you can come back because Rice was up seven to nothing. Then it was fourteen to seven, and you know, seventeen to fourteen at halftime. And you know, Charlotte came back, and uh, you know, so they're they they've got good players, got a really good couple good receivers. 
Uh, they're explosive. And uh, if they get hot, you know, they're hard, hard to contain. And, you know, they lost some close, you know, 42 to 41 against Georgia State that they won. So they've scored points. They, they've got the ability to score. Yep. It'll be Middle and Charlotte, 2.30 on Saturday at Floyd Stadium. We'll take our final break. Have some final thoughts with the head coach after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Back pain and get back to what you love with help from Ascension St. Thomas Joint Replacement Institute and Ascension St. Thomas Spine Institute. Our experienced care teams offer the latest technology to help shorten recovery, including minimally invasive options and robotic surgery. And to make getting care easier, we connect the dots for you, helping you navigate everything from imaging and lab services to pharmacy and physical therapy. Details about appointment scheduling can be found at ascension.org slash St. Thomas Joint and Spine. This is Coach Stockstill. I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about the litter problem on our roadways. The Tennessee Department of Transportation spends $19 million every year just to pick up litter. There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter. Remind others not to. And report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're all on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com. This holiday, whether you're roasting a Kroger Simple Truth Turkey for 40 or making a Murray's Baked Free for two, whether you're baking a pie with fresh cosmic crisp apples like Grandma's or ordering private selection cream pies when Grandma's pie is all gone, Kroger has fast, fresh delivery and free pickup so you can make holiday meals that bring you all together to create memories that last. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. It's never lost on Window World that your home is your largest physical investment. Window World's integrity will be noticed from your very first moment of contact. A clean, professional installation of premium windows, siding, doors, and more are designed to last while leaving your home looking amazing. Window World and their lifetime warranty will always be there when it really matters. They're America's most trusted remodeler and proud partner of Middle Tennessee Athletics because the difference is integrity and always in the details. Welcome back for a final segment with Coach Rick Stockstill. Brian Barrett, the boss man, has been our studio producer tonight on a busy night uh, on the Blue Raider Network. We had basketball earlier today and women's basketball going on as well. And uh, this weekend it will be more of the same as uh, both teams uh, are continue to play. Coach, your ball club uh, coming off that loss. Now you've got Charlotte coming back home. You play two weeks in a row at home. And uh, – Big, big weekend for your guys. Yeah, you know, I'm not, like I said, after the game, I'm not worried about the second one. Uh, all our focus is on this one, and we got to have a great week of practice and, you know, get ready because it's, uh, again, it's a, a very dangerous team. Uh, nothing to lose, and, uh, you know, so we got to be ready to go. All right, let's go get them. Yes, sir. Coach Rick Stockstill tonight. I want to thank everybody for being here at the Boulevard and those of you listening. We'll be back next week right here on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. You've been listening to Rick Stockstill Live. Tonight's show was presented by Ascend Federal Credit Union.